Hello and welcome to the Cold Coffee Club, a podcast brought to you by Houston Moms. We're here to give you a little bit of that mom-to-mom connection, fun, and conversation amidst all the chaos. Join us as we take a break from doing all the things and explore the wide spectrum of this crazy motherhood role. We'll interview fun guests, talk about cool grown-up topics, laugh, share, and grow together. So go ahead, reheat that coffee, and put your feet up. Here we go. Good morning and welcome to another episode of the Cold Coffee Club. I am so excited about this episode today. We are going to dive into maintaining female friendships. So, you know, as we get older and the challenges and changes of life come into play, it is hard to maintain those solid friendships that you have with other women. And so we're going to talk about how to support each other, how to maintain your tribe um, and how to be a good friend to other women. But before we do, let's spill some tea. So uh, I only have a win again today. It's so excited when most of your experiences are wins. It's super exciting that uh, your fails, even if you do have them, if they don't play like a big role in your life to where you remember them, that's a blessing in itself. So I'm excited to be celebrating another win. So I discovered a video game that has been a godsend for us. So I first started playing it with um, the guy that I'm dating and uh, it was actually like a really therapeutic experience. It really helped us see how we work together as a team, see how uh, you know we problem solve together. And then I uh, started playing it with my kids and it has actually been really, really fun. And um, I'm excited for them to start playing with each other. They haven't yet. So I'm excited to see how that goes, but it is called It Takes Two. And we play it on the Nintendo Wii, but I'm pretty sure it's on different um, platforms as well. We have been playing together. I played it with my youngest first, and you can only play with someone else. You cannot play it alone. You need a partner. And we have, it is, the premise is basically that these two parents are turned into little dolls and they need to reach their daughter. They need to, uh, get back to her and they are exploring through their house through their yard um trying to get back and they're tiny and it's it's a whole deal there's a point where you're stuck in the basement and you're fighting off a vacuum cleaner there's a point where you're um climbing through the tree house that you've built for your daughter and uh, trying to fend off squirrels and wasps. It is, and that's as far as I've gotten so far. And it, it is so much fun. It's so exciting. Um, and I'm not a gamer. I am horrible at video games. I will admit that, but um, I've had so much fun playing it. And I, I've been playing it with my, my sons and they think it's fascinating. I will say as a warning, because I was I was kind of nervous to play it with my sons, being that we are a, a divorced family. Um, the premise is that the parents, uh, the daughter turned them into dolls um, because she wanted to, she was feeling some feelings about the fact that they were in the process of separating and her emotions and everything. She turned them into dolls to kind of make herself feel better. Um, And so I was nervous to play it with my kids and we, I let them know, like, that's kind of what's happening there. But also we were able to skip a lot of the, um, like the story stuff. You didn't, you don't have to watch like the videos of, you know, here's how they got there. You don't really have to watch them. And I didn't really want to, because I know it's a little bit still sore for them knowing like, Hey, your parents are divorced and it is still a healing process for them. Uh, So if you're in a similar boat and you're a little anxious to introduce that game to them, you can skip over the whole process where the parents are telling the daughter like, hey, we're we're getting divorced. Um, So the whole point of it is that, you know, the parents have to work together and I'm not sure how it ends. um, And I didn't want to, to invest too much in that story either, just in case the parents do get back together. Um, I didn't want my kids to have any kind of um, feelings about the fact that their parents are not getting back together. Uh, So that is a quick warning. If you're going through that, um, you might want to skip some of the the video content in the in the game. If you don't feel like having those those feelings come up. Uh, But it is still a great game. It's so much fun. And I'm excited to encourage my kids to play it together because it encourages teamwork. It really makes you have to work together. You cannot get through any of the stages without the help of your partner. 
and really collaborating together and making sure that you're on the same page. Um, so, and even as adults, if you're not playing it with your kids, you can play it with your spouse, your partner, your significant other. It is a great, like it's great therapy. Uh, it's a great way to do some couples therapy together and really like, come on, we've got to do this together. We've got to work together and stay calm. And <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So that was my win. It is, it has been such a great experience playing games with my kids and it be, you know, a really good learning experience for all of us. For my cream and sugar, I'm going to recommend Sequest Interactive Aquarium. We went, um, a couple weekends ago and the closest one to Houston is in Fort Worth. And so it's a little bit of a drive, but it is so worth it. So we got to um, feed a bunch of fish. We got to play with like turtles and tortoises and um, iguanas. We got to um, touch stingrays, which was really exciting for me and my kids. Um, I wasn't sure how great it was going to be. It's located inside of a mall and I didn't like expect too much. I wasn't sure what to expect. But when we went, we had an absolute blast. You get to interact with so many interesting animals. Um, you get to see sharks and otters. My my youngest child is convinced that we now need to own an otter. We need to just go put it in our swimming pool in the backyard. It's not happening, but I love his thinking. <laughs> um, but so many really cool animals that you don't get to see very often and you get to touch them, play with them, feed them. We paid to get a bunch of feeding tokens so that there's all kinds of different foods that you can feed the animals. And it is an absolute blast. It was so worth the drive. We made a whole day trip of it. Um, it took us about three and a half hours to get there from our house. And then um, I kind of have this mental rule where if we spend so much time driving there and back, we need to spend about that much time uh, at the location. So we spent a couple hours at a Sequest and then we went to a park and played for a while. And then I took my kids out to eat. Uh, they've never been to a Golden Corral and it's not great food. Uh, I mean, we all know it's not great food, but they were so excited just to get to try different things and as much of it as they wanted. So that turned into a whole experience in and of itself. Uh, so we had an absolute blast. I would highly recommend checking out Sequest. They have tickets online that you can purchase. You can also do, um, you can purchase your tokens there to um, feed the animals. You can purchase those online as well. Super fun experience, a great day trip idea. Hey Houston, I want to hear from you. Would you like to be a guest on the Cold Coffee Club? Send me a message at thecoldcoffeeclubhm at gmail.com. That's thecoldcoffeeclubhm, like Houston moms, at gmail.com. Can't wait to hear from you. All right, Cold Coffee Club. So we have Brie here with us today, and she and I are going to chat about maintaining our female friendships. I know as life goes on and as we get older and life gets busier, it is hard to maintain those friendships and really make sure that we are there for our people and that they're there for us. Uh, so we're going to chat about that. But before we do, Brie, let's, uh, let's hear a little bit about you. Tell us who you are with Houston Moms and a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, so I'm Brie Griff. I have been with Houston Moms um, for a few months now, and I am a consultant for the website. And so um, I, if there's any changes that need to be made to the website, whether that's about, you know, content or layout, um, then that um, is my responsibility. I found out about Houston Moms actually uh, before I even had considered moving to Houston, funny enough. Um, I moved from Houston about a year and a half ago, and I had connected with Elizabeth Baker on Instagram before then, and then connected with um, other Houston Moms. And so when I had the opportunity to move here to work for Cron, which who was my previous employer, um, I uh, actually you know, started working with them more. And um, in the last couple of months, I've been brought on as a part of the, the staff. And then also, um, I also write too for them. 
Um, let's see. I, like I said, I've been in Houston for about a year and a half. I have two little boys, three and six. Um, I was a journalist and right now I'm doing PR and marketing for a local company. And I, um, also, um, was recently divorced. So, um, just about a year now. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. And we are so glad to have you with us. First off, let's talk about like how important are female friendships in our lives? Like I know you just mentioned divorce and, um, you know, I'm divorced as well. And I really needed to lean on my people so much during that whole process. But maybe you can tell us a little bit about the role your female friendships have played in your life more recently, at least. Yeah, for sure. I would say that I didn't really learn how to be a good friend until like the past few years. Um, You know, I wasn't really exposed to that growing up. I have two older sisters. Obviously, I was good friends with them, but we moved around a lot as a family. And so we didn't really have time to develop those friendships. And I didn't really get to see my my parents have those friendships, Um, you know, navigating conflict. Um, and, uh, you know, repairing and, you know, communicating with each other, but also just, I think that as having two older sisters that I just oftentimes viewed women as competition, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so it's only, I would say in the last couple of years when I think really that my marriage, I started to realize that, you know, you can't get everything from your marriage. You can't get everything from a partner yeah. that I started really building those, those female friendships more. And I was very, I was living in Boise, Idaho at the time. So I was very far away from any family or any of my, you know, uh, older friends. So, um, it really became a time to, to meet women and, and become friends with them. Yeah. Yeah. That's such an interesting point that I think a lot of people um, miss is that your partner cannot be your everything. It's it's, (laughs) it's so much of a weight to put on that other person, but also it's like, that's not sustainable. And if you end up, you know, in the boat where we are, where you get divorced, it's like, well, who do I have now? Like I have nobody and really just making sure that you're partner fits in you know one spot like I can come to you for these things and you are this Mm -hmm. in my life but you are not my everything and I Mm -hmm. think that's where especially in my case that thinking kind of led us to divorce like I was his best friend (laughs) like absolutely am I like I get that I might be your best friend but I'm I your only friend and it turned out kind of (laughs) yeah Yeah. Uh oh. (laughs) Yeah. That's a lot. That's so true. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. When your entire life is built around one person and you're expected to just be one type of person. Um, you know, especially after I had kids, like I did the, after I had my first baby, I kind of was just like, well, I'm a mom now. This is yeah. who I am. This is what I wear. This is what I do. Um, and my husband as well didn't have, you know, we met in DC, we met in Washington, DC, and then we moved to Idaho where he's from, but he didn't have really any friends in Idaho. And so then I for sure became his, his one and only friend. And I unfortunately think that's really common Mm -hmm. in marriages and relationships because men have such a difficult time, oftentimes making friends. Right. Um, And so then it can be, uh, I remember we would try to make friends in Boise even, and I would like, you know, you do like double dates or whatever with another married couple. And it was always like, will the husbands get along? And right. um, they usually don't, <laughs> or they like, they do, but they don't like, it's not like a deep friendship. It's not right. like we're with women. One of my favorite thing about women is that, uh, and maybe it is because I'm a Texan um, mm-hmm. and a, a former journalist, but I can meet a woman and we'll be exchanging like trauma and secrets and being incredibly vulnerable with each other within like two minutes of meeting each other. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> men, men don't really have that. Cap- Unfortunately, our society's taught them to not have that. And so it, it, it can be really difficult, but it can also put a, a big strain on a marriage. Absolutely. So what do female friendships look like for you right now? Um, you know, after everything that you've gone through and moving and all of that, what do your female friendships look like? You know, I actually have probably the most friends that I've ever had in my life right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I think people in Houston are so incredibly friendly. I'm from North Texas. And so um, it's just really easy to make friends here. And I really love people. And I, like I said, I really love women. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And I would say though, that getting a divorce, and I'm sure you know this too, it changes a lot of your friendships. A lot of married friends, married women, um, I don't think that they do it on purpose, but they can often like create distance between the two of you. Mm -hmm. I think it's because they don't understand your life. You know, there is just kind of like off, offsetting or off putting, not really off putting, but it's just like they, they don't understand it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. rather than trying to understand it, like I said, I don't think a lot of them even realize that they're doing it, but I mm -hmm. think that they, they create that distance, which can be um, pretty painful right. when I moved here initially. Um, I live in a really great neighborhood in the Heights and, um, I met a ton of mom friends. It was really great. But, um, pretty soon after I moved here is when we decided, um, or I guess when I asked for the divorce. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I knew them married, I knew them in the middle of the divorce, and then I knew them after the divorce. And it's definitely has switched the dynamic of the friendship being mm -hmm. divorced. Um, you know, I have my kids every other week, so my schedule is not, um, consistent. I don't have a partner I can leave my, my kids with when I do have them to go see people. Yeah. Um, so I still have, I still have mom friends. I have some, I have, um, especially some mom friends who are very, uh, flexible and understanding and, and great. Um, I mean, I would say all my mom friends are honestly, um, yeah. but, uh, I also have a lot of younger friends. Yeah. <laughs> I, awesome. uh, you know, <laughs> I'm 35 years old, which a lot of people are always surprised to hear that. Um, I'm not working in makeup right now too. So I look even younger, um, but I'm 35 and New Year's Eve, uh, I was over to a friend's house and this guy was like, said something about, oh, I'm too old for this. I was like, yeah, me too. And he was like, I was like, oh, and he like looked at me and I was like, I think I'm the youngest, oldest person here. And he goes, are you sure? And I was like, I'm 35. And he was like, thought you were 28 and I was like <laughs> that's I awesome. am here at my 23 year old friends <laughs> I love there it <laughs> so there are times like I'm going out tonight with with another friend actually with two friends one is 28 one's 22 and mm -hmm. it is like I think too that maybe is where the disconnect comes with like the married moms is that mm -hmm. they see me going out and like it's been actually really fun for me because I've kind of uh realize that age doesn't actually matter like you can yeah. still go out wear cute clothes yeah. you know go dancing um you know 35 is not like the kiss of death not um, <laughs> right I know it's I I still feel like I'm like 20 most times um <laughs> but I think that that's confusing to some people because they see those two parts of my life and it can be confusing for me too you know one week I have the kids and I'm full-time mom uh, other week. Um, I, I don't have the kids. And so I have more of that flexibility. Yeah. Um, but you know, like, like I said, tonight I'm going out with friends and we're, uh, my 22 year old friend was like, we're going to go get trash. And I was like, well, I mean, I, I have like a lot of things I need to do around the house tomorrow. <laughs> like I own my house, like, you know, I was like, I have some work I need to do this weekend. Like, right. While so age does up. not matter, while age does not matter, it hits a little different when you go get trashed when you're 22 yeah. versus 35. <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't need to waste my entire weekend trying to recover from getting trashed with a 22 year old. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But thank goodness for that. I love that. I'm a huge fan of having different friend groups. So I have, you know, and, and understanding that those friend groups play a, a part of, of your life, but they're not the only thing. And you can also jump back to somebody else or a different friend group. So, you know, I have my younger friend groups where it's like, if I want to go out and I want to go dancing and all that stuff, I'm 36. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sleepy most days, like by <laughs> nine, I'm like, I'm a little tired yeah. <laughs> but yeah. those nights where I have that extra like burst of energy I'm like yes let's go and I love yeah. having those friends who are in that whole mm -hmm. life and then I have like my friends who are all about the mom life and I'm like yes play dates and let's do that and cool brunch I'm in I love it <laughs> and then I'm like and then having like my childhood friends who yeah I was the first to have kids in my my group of best friends and mm -hmm. um you know, it changed the dynamic for us, but they were also very like 
they were very supportive of where I was. I was super supportive of where they were. And mm -hmm. as we're all kind of shifting and, you know, one of my best friends just got married and I'm in the middle or I just got divorced. Like, uh, it's been, ooh, it's been a year and a half now. So <laughs> there's that. And so it's just like, we're all in different stages, which is fun, but mm -hmm. finding that way to still connect and still like, I love you. You're my best friend. We're good cool. Yeah. Um, having those different groups of friends is really necessary, especially because we're such dynamic people. We need different things at different times. And having mm -hmm. those people who we can lean on at certain points is super important. I love it. Um, yeah. And I'm always, I love new friendships. I love getting to know new people. And I'm like, <laughs> so which friend group do you fit in for me? Like, are you the wild friend? Are yeah. we, are, or are we just going to have like a real chill game night? Like, where do you yeah. fit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love the uh, friends that you can do like both. Those are my favorite friends. Those yeah. are the best. <laughs> yeah. I also I also have noticed that like with my younger friends too, that I, I am now like the big sister. Mm -hmm. Um, they love to come over whenever I have my boys and my boys love, love when yeah. people come. It. and so um I'm always like you can come over and get some kid time you know yes <laughs> um, but yeah some of my oldest friends so like I said we moved around a lot so I didn't I don't I'm not one of those unfortunately who's like I have a best friend from high school mm -hmm. um in fact, yeah. I, I don't really have a best friend because I feel like to have a best friend someone has to consider you their best friend does that make sense and like yeah. nobody else. um so I have lots of lots of best friends, obviously. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately that can change, you know, through life, as we, you mentioned earlier, you know, friendships can wax and wane depending on what's happening in life or, or just because of people being people. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, some of my oldest friends are, are from like the eighth grade and, you know, we, I've lived all over the country, Chicago, yeah. New York, DC, Idaho. Um, yeah. so, but, but the great thing about them is that they like know the core you. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, knowing like Brianna in eighth grade, who was like a very bad cheerleader, so bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and like in hearing like how they viewed you and like how they know that person that you were, before the babies, before the, you know, divorce, before, you know, the, the career changes. Um, that's always like so refreshing because it, yeah. it brings you back to who you are. Yes. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. That's a hundred percent true. Every time. So I grew up in Denver and every time I go see my friends, they're like, remember when you used to wear purple eyeshadow? And I'm like, <laughs> I remember. Um, <laughs> like, I look at you now. Purple eyeshadow. So okay, I don't but know I would like is. dunk your whole middle thing and like <laughs> smear it. Like I was that. And I was like, why didn't anyone tell me stop that? <laughs> oh my gosh. I and like my there was a whole so phase bad. of like colored eye <laughs> I uh colored mascara. I did oh, that too. Yes. It was like purple or blue. Yeah. And, like, I did so many things. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Absolutely. So it's, it's fun to like reminisce and like, remember yeah. that time you fell in the creek? And I'm like, yeah, y'all remember me when I was so, like, I'm still awkward, but when mm. I was so awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the funny thing about my friends is like, I remember feeling and being very awkward in eighth grade or like in junior high and high school. And my friends are like, you were so cool. And I was like, I must have. <laughs> given off that impression but I was very uncomfortable in my skin right right and I think yep. that's like I think and I hope it's I hope it's going to be different for this for you know younger generations but I think that's where a lot of like female friendships end is mm -hmm. because we feel uncomfortable in our skin mm -hmm. and we you know society is is always saying there's always that push for, um, romantic love. Yes. And, um, I always, I always say, you know, I love a book or a TV show or a movie that really highlights friendship love. Like that is very, I, I think it's rare, but I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you're younger, you, you're not as exposed to that as much, or at least I feel like we weren't in our generation. Yeah. Um, and so it's just like, the things you would fall out with friends over, you know? <laughs> I was actually taking like a mental inventory of some of my closest friends, especially growing up, but even now. And, and when I think about the friendships that have ended, I'm like, mm -hmm. well, for what reason? And none of them were ever like, oh, I like this guy and you liked him too. And we fought, it was never 
anything like that. But I realized yeah. like I wasn't getting what I needed from this friendship either. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it was conditional. Like if you do yeah. these things for me, yes. then I'm your friend. Or, yes. um, you know, even as an adult realizing, you know, some of my friendships were only because we were in close proximity to each other. We yeah. lived on the same street and that was it. And yeah. even though I might've thought, because I love people so much, I might've <laughs> thought like, we're going to be friends forever. And then yeah. you know, getting divorced and moving. And I'm just like, so I never hear from you again. Like, this is it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah. understanding that some friendships are like that and being okay mm -hmm. with it. Like, yes, in the moment it hurts so much. Yeah. Like, oh my yeah. gosh, you are done with me. And we've lived across the street from each other for four years and mm -hmm. we hung out every weekend. And now yeah. all of a sudden it's gone. But realizing that friendships, you you do have needs and that, you know, mm -hmm. some of those friendships need to provide a little bit of something for you. Mm -hmm. um, and so while we're on that topic, what are some things that you need from a friendship and are you getting those needs? Yeah, you know, um, that's funny. I was I was talking to a new friend yesterday. I meet a lot of friends at work and um, work friends are always interesting because, you know, it's, it's always interesting. Like, I remember like my first real job. I made so many friends. We were all reporters. We were all really young. We're all living in DC. Um, but then when I got laid off, I was one of the only few who got laid off. And um, I don't think that they distanced themselves. I think I distanced myself because I was in so much like pain from it. But um, I'm always, I always find it intriguing to see which friends last and which don't. Cause you're right. You like, sometimes you're like, this person is going to be like, we're going to be best friends for a long yeah. time. Yeah. And I do wish that I, I, you know, some of those people still like we follow each other on social media and I do mm -hmm. wish that I hadn't um, pulled away, but mm -hmm. I mean, I was 23, 22, mm -hmm. so we got to give ourselves grace. I did lose a friend this year that um, I thought was like, we spent a lot of time together. We, we um, invested a lot of time together, but then we went through really, we both went through a really hard time mm -hmm. and um I didn't feel like I was being heard. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel like my um, situation was like being fully considered. I didn't feel, I felt like I was trying to say, this is when you do this or say this, this is hurtful to me. Yeah. And it wasn't being, it was kind of being dismissed. Um, which is funny because I have learned that I can also do that. Yeah. So sure. yeah. Like I said, we're all we're all just learning and, and trying new things um, and become trying to become better people. But so that was, you know, that is a friendship that I lost and I and I miss that person. But I also know that it was not a healthy situation for me. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of my friends the other day was like, I feel like your life has gotten a lot more calm since mm. you stopped me out with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's big. <laughs> yeah. That's big. Um, yeah. But but it's true though, like having having younger friends, um, it does feel a lot sometimes like like give it or like I'm giving a lot, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Sure. Um, I think it's that young older sister role. Um, mm -hmm. I was telling someone the other day, I was like, I think everybody thinks I have a lot of money. And I put like I'm a single mom and I'm working right. like, multiple jobs, so I'm not really sure that comes in. And they were like, Yeah you're older and you own your house and I was like yeah but <laughs> that means I'm poorer <laughs> <laughs> like I'm paying for child care I'm paying for right my <laughs> um but I mean oh, that's, I think that's where it comes is where it's like uh but that's also on me of drawing those boundaries sure. of making it clear because I do I would love to be the older you know financially stable friend who can be like yeah don't worry about paying me back for dinner right. Um, but I think it, I think it really is a line of like taking a step back and being like, okay, do I feel like I'm giving too much and they're mm -hmm. taking too much? Um, you know, is that on me? Because I am unfortunately a giver. I, mm -hmm. I'm a hundred percent a people pleaser where mm -hmm. I will give and give and give, and I will expect people to do exactly the same for me. Yes. And that yeah. is not healthy at all. Yeah. And that is also something that I learned <laughs> in the past year. Yes is um, knowing that, yeah, I can set myself on fire for this person, but I've made that decision. Nobody owes that to me. And, yes. you know, lowering my expectations as well um, has been really vital, I think, to, to, to saving those friendships, to keeping yeah. friends. 
Um, yeah. and you know, it's, it's only through really hard conversations with other friends that I have learned that unfortunately. Yeah. 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 That's such an important point is remembering that not having that expectation that I'm doing these things for this person and putting myself out there for this person and not having that expectation that they would do the same for you. That is a lesson that I learned probably within the last year where I'm like, I need to stop expecting people to treat me the way I would treat them because you will almost always be disappointed almost always sometimes you'll get surprised and you're like oh my gosh thank you like I love this this is exactly what I do for you and most of the time it's not going to be that way it's not and and still knowing that that doesn't make this person necessarily a bad friend a bad person whatever it's just knowing that like I this is how I give love as a friend this is how I I would want to treat you you might not do it the same way and that's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. that is, that's yeah. one thing that will tear apart a friendship so quickly is expecting them to treat you exactly the way you would treat them. Yes, so, you're, yes. you're absolutely right too. Oh and also gosh. taking a step back and, and um, I think being, yeah, like wondering like, why do I expect them this of them? Is it mm-hmm. because this is what, you know, society teaches me friends are mm-hmm. supposed to be like, is this because I would do it is because I would want someone to do this for me. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, when I do set myself on fire for people or go overboard, mm-hmm. um, cause I am, uh, I think codependent is where mm-hmm. you try to earn yeah. people love. Yeah. Um, so that's right me there with you. <laughs> Yeah. right there with you. <laughs> um, then I, I, I have a lot of, um, like anger about it, obviously, you know, you, you resent people after a while, but they're not asking you to set yourself on well, some people exactly. do ask you to set themselves on sure. yourself on fire for them, yeah. but most people are not asking you to set yourself on fire for them or make all these concessions. Um, and so I'm getting angry and annoyed that my, I mean myself, cause I'm doing it to myself, kind yeah. of, you know, yeah. that's such a tough challenge to get through, uh, with friendships. It's just, I feel like those expectations are always kind of getting in the way from you just yeah. enjoying like, Hey, I have you for this, this moment, this time, this experience, whatever, I'm just going to roll with it. But yeah. then those expectations come in and you're like, well, why didn't you, why'd you say it like that? Well, that's not okay. <laughs> like, then it starts going haywire and it's a yeah, problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like as far as my friendships go, like I need friends who are supportive, but that mm. can look like so many different things to so many different friends. And so, yeah. um, you know, we've talked several times now about having different friend groups who fit these, these needs that we have. And so knowing like what friends you can turn to for like, Hey, I need a shoulder to cry on. Like, yeah. I need you here for this moment or having those friends who are like, do you want to go out? Cause I need to go out. Those <laughs> friends like, yes, got it. And so just kind of knowing where everyone sort of fits and yeah. where you can get those things. And also like one thing that I've realized more recently, as far as maintaining friendships, mainly with females, but just in general, is mm-hmm. that you cannot have just like with spouses, that person cannot be your everything. So yeah. I can't turn to a friend and be like, I'm going to dump all the things on you. You yeah. are going to hear about work. You're going to hear about the kids. You're going to hear <laughs> about my ex-husband and what I think about him. You're going to hear about yeah. all the things. Yeah. No one friend can hold all of that. No yeah. one friend is going to want to stick around for that for the long term. Like, oh my gosh, I am always your sounding board for yeah. all the things. <laughs> like, yeah. Then you don't have time to talk that. about anything else and they don't have time to talk about themselves. Exactly. Exactly. So being able to kind of bounce off each other and having different people that you can turn to. My, Mm -hmm. my aunt is an actual like good friend of mine. And I turn to her about certain things where I'm like, Hey, you're older than me. Can you give me some insight? Um, Mm -hmm. Can you help me with this? And then I have, thank goodness for Houston moms, because I met so many women who have turned out to be some of my very best friends and I'll Mm -hmm. turn to them about certain things. And we keep it lighthearted for the most part. And then if we need to, we can get in depth, but I'm not having to just like have all these feelings with them. I'm just like, Hey, yeah. this is dumb. And they're like, girl, yeah. I know it is dumb. And I'm like, I love this. <laughs> and no, then, you so know, true. yeah. And then having other friends who are like, yeah. Hey, we're not going to talk about anything serious ever. Yeah. Like we're just going to be the fun friends and that's it. 
So yeah. having those different outlets <laughs> mm -hmm. can save all your other friendships instead of yeah. just dumping on one and then feeling like you're being just the taker all the time. Like I'm going through something again. Like, aren't you always? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this yes. is all I ever I interact with you. Going through something. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Like, yeah. <laughs> like what? It's, it's Tuesday. I'm like, yeah, it's another day <laughs> in my life. Another day. <laughs> You're like, it's Tuesday at 7 a.m. You're like, yeah, it's yeah. Like <laughs> duh. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that a lot of people don't understand is even if you're not, I think nowadays in the in the world of social media and phones and all that, it's easier mm -hmm. to stay in contact with people, even though you're, you know, far apart, if that's mm -hmm. the case. Um but I think there is a, a lot to be said about just like reaching out randomly. Like I might not be able to see you and have coffee with you every yeah. week, but mm -hmm. just like, a hey, how are you? And my best friends are very comfortable with like, yeah, she's not going to respond when I say, hey, like it might take <laughs> her a couple days, but we're good. It's fine. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm there for all the big stuff, like all the yeah. big things. I might not be there randomly on Tuesday at 7 a.m., but, yeah. you know, when you have a crisis, I'm there and I've got you and we're good. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even just recognizing that it is okay to be sort of distant from your yeah. friends and then still know, and you still know that y'all mean everything to each other or so much to each other. Um, yeah. it is okay to accept like, Hey, you know, I haven't heard from you in a couple of weeks, but I know you love me and we're good. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, unfortunately I learned that really hard lesson, uh, this past year. Cause I started dating again. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, it, it's, it relates to, to friendships and people in general too, where it's like, if you don't get a text back immediately or, you know, someone isn't like, as like texting you as like, as much as, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like that where, um, I had to teach myself, um, unfortunately too late, but that's a lesson that I've learned and I'm still working on where I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, it, they don't hate me. And if yeah. they do hate me, then like, that's a responsibility to tell me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to assume that they're busy or, yeah. you know, that nothing has changed. And yes. I think that has, um, definitely helped my relationships, my friendships a lot. Yeah. It's not being like, am I annoying you? Like, yeah. should I stop texting you so much? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, oh, you don't want to hang out with me tonight. Oh, okay, then like I must not mean anything to you. Like right. I was very codependent with my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. My parents are are very codependent. Um, so I, I didn't see any relationship that wasn't right. Um, so just having to learn that to to, yeah, like you said, you know, it's there are some friends that I always know, no matter what, like, right. You no, know, like I said, my friend from eighth grade, Truk, um, we can just, I can text her randomly and we'll just send and each other a couple of texts and then like not talk again for a couple of months, you know, yeah. but I mean, we'll see yeah. each other every other year or so. Um, and it's like, nothing has changed. So. Yeah. 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 Do you have any advice for maintaining female friendships? Like I know it can be really hard, especially when all of our focuses are on everything going on. And, um, you know, even though we are far past high school and there's still like sometimes cattiness, there's yeah. sometimes like hurt feelings that like, shouldn't be like, I, I don't know what we're upset about. Like, well, I'm mad at you because you this and that it happens. It really does happen. But like, mm -hmm. is there any advice that you would give some of our listeners for how to be a good friend, how to help facilitate those relationships where even if you're going through something together, like if the friendship is not what it used to be, how do you kind of bring it back around? Yeah, no, I think, I think it's really is about communication and it's also about, um, expecting the best, if that makes sense, like yeah. assuming the best of somebody's, for instance, one of my really good friends, we were supposed to go to Portland, uh, last summer for a weekend and she's definitely a doer. Like she loves to go. Like she was like, you want to camp one night, like on the beach? And I was like, no, like yeah. Flying up from I just want to sit still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I just was not in a good place mentally right then at that moment. And I didn't handle it well. I mean, I, I, I didn't handle it as poorly as I could have. Mm -hmm. If my parents would see her, she'd be like, there's been growth. Um, <laughs> he said yesterday, at least. Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, I was like, hey, I just don't think I'm in the mindset for this trip. Like, I am not going to be any fun. You know, mm -hmm. I suggest like maybe you find somebody else to to go with. 
And she was just like, okay, this is very surprising. You know, I'm, and, but, but then I reached out to her the next day and was like, Hey, I'm sorry. I'm not mad at you. Like, yeah, he's like, no. And I, I was surprised by what you said. I said, and it did come off a little cold, but I know you didn't mean for it to be because I can, unfortunately, I think me and I know other women as well like um sometimes we can come off unfortunately unfortunately it's like it's more common for women to to come off as cold and it to be an issue where maybe not as much for men um I know I can say things and it can be rather like blunt or to the point Mm -hmm. or you know not in the kindest way um And she was like, so yeah, I mean, you said it rather coldly, but I assumed that that's not how you meant it. Mm -hmm. And that right there was just like, and so um, I'm going to start crying, but, (laughs) but we, uh, you know, we, we worked through that. I went and saw her a couple of months later um, where she lives in Boise. And then in fact, um, she came to visit me for New Year's Eve because I just texted her and I was like, I need you. Like, it, life is hard right now so she flew down here and uh, we were at a bar and we were talking about um boys men and dating <laughs> and um I started like arguing with her about something and she was like what is going on she was like you're I feel like you're like projecting on me right now and I was like yes I am <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, this has nothing to do with you, really. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we just know it at the core, once again, just assuming the best of someone, ah. just being like, I, and that honestly is all I ever ask from anybody is like to assume the best of me. I'm going to mess up. I'm going to be me. I'm going to like be inconsiderate, but um. I'm trying not to be those things. And yeah. I think, I mean, you know, if we, if we are having friendships and relationships with people who are also focused on their growth, I think mm-hmm. that that's incredibly important too. Yeah. as people who um, are self-aware, who are emotionally intelligent, or at least working on it and know that they need to work on it is really important. So I would say, you know, giving each other grace, um, assuming the best. And then also um, just like for me, it's my friends who can just come over and I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to make dinner for the like for the boys. If you just want to come over, Um, you know, they'll come over. We'll eat with the boys. The boys will they'll read books to the boys before the boys go Mm -hmm. to bed. Boys love that. And then like we'll just hang out and talk afterwards like that. You know, sometimes friendships just look like that. And sometimes they just look like texts. Sometimes Mm -hmm. I actually have a lot of, I have a lot of Instagram friends that I've never been met in real life. Isn't that the best? It's so cool. (laughs) It's really cool. I love that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I've actually never met any of the Houston moms in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Because I live like in the loop and they live in Katy Um, and I'm a loop person. So I'm like, (laughs) Uh, <laughs> I'm such a snob. Uh, not really. It's a long drive when you have a three-year-old. Right. Um, so those Instagram friend, Instagram friendships, and I, I also say like vulnerability. I think yeah. is so important, and it's something that I always try to emulate on social media, which is why I think so many women have felt comfortable. Um, you know, that in different states, even. Yes to communicate with me about how where they are and how they're feeling because I'm doing that yeah um you know Brene Brown says that vulnerability is courage and I completely agree with that and maybe sometimes I'm a little too vulnerable maybe I overshare a little bit but you know (laughs) we can just (laughs) there's that meme where it's like no girl you're good you just shared something very traumatic like you were a stand-up comedian I'm like yeah that's me (laughs) Especially in this world, we need so much vulnerability. Everything yeah. is so like p- perfectly curated and just so true. fake. And we desperately need vulnerability and the real, real. We all yeah. need all of that. Oh my Absolutely. gosh. <laughs> yeah, I, I I love that you, you know, pointed out 
accepting that it's not about you in your friendships. Like that is something that is something I've really been working on because I take everything personally. And I'm like, this probably has nothing to do with you. Like this person, your friend noticing like, yep, you're projecting and this this isn't me. And like, yeah, "Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Cause I am constantly like, did I do something? Like what's wrong with me? And a lot of times it has absolutely nothing to do with you. So just sitting back and knowing like, (laughs) it really is. It really is. And once I started saying that to myself, it's not about you. Then it started, it started becoming a bit of a habit, just replaying it in my mind because everything I thought was about me. I was like, I must be a horrible person for you to act like this to me. Like I must be nothing. Yeah. And just remembering, like, you don't know anyone else's backstory. You don't know what people are going through in that moment, what yeah. thought they might have just had in their head. Mm-hmm. It probably has nothing to do with you at all. Yeah. And accepting yeah. that, especially in our friendships, is so necessary because mm-hmm. everyone has their, as close as you might be to somebody and you might think, you know, like everything about them. You yeah. don't. You really yeah. don't. And yeah. they've all got their stuff. Everyone comes to the table with their stuff. And knowing that regardless of what you're going through, we're good. We're friends. I'm mm-hmm. here for you. You're here for me. Um, just keeping that in mind will probably save so many friendships. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And knowing your triggers. Yeah. Yes. I mean, oh like, gosh. But, yeah. Yeah. That's been a big one for me. I'm still working on that one. Yeah. Aren't we all? <laughs> Well, before we wrap up, I will tell you that like, I feel like we have similar situations and I'm on like the one week on one week off kind of thing. Yeah. And I, we need to be friends. So we're, you know. we are friends now. I do. Oh. A- <laughs> yeah. I'll go to like networking coffees and stuff and I'll be like, but we're, fr- we're also friends now. Like we yeah. can work together. But we're all- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. <laughs> Well, where can our listeners find you and and explore your vulnerability on social media? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm mainly on Instagram. My handle is uh, Brie underscore McGriff. So that's M-C-G-R-I-F-F. But if they just search Brie Griff, then they'll, they'll likely follow me. But then you can also, you know, usually find me on Houston Moms writing occasionally. Um, so yeah, it's been so awesome. great chatting. You too. Thanks so much for joining me. This was a blast. (laughs) I had so much fun. This week for our Houston Moms House Blend, I have chosen a post called five 2024 release books that I'm excited to read this year. Uh, Becca Slocum is our resident book mom. She knows all the books. She has all the recommendations for books. We love her for that. Uh, She wrote a post about five books that are coming out this year that she's really excited to read. If you're having a bit of a dry spell when it comes to reading and you don't know what to pick up next, definitely check out this post and see what there is to look forward to this year. Um, I have been trying to read so many different genres of books and um, I'm excited to check out Becca's list and see, you know, which ones I really connect with. I might read all of them because it's all kind of different stuff and different lanes. And uh, I'm really excited to check those out. So you should look at them too. For our See You Later Caffeinator this week, I found a fun fact that I think is really useful for us to keep in mind, especially when we're thinking about those female friendships that we have in our lives. So research from UCLA suggests that women who have support from female friends during stressful times may live longer than those who don't. One study of women diagnosed with breast cancer even found that participants with 10 or more friends had a higher survival rate than those without close friendships. And I think it's really important to invest in those friendships, really do what you can to to be there for each other and to have that tribe that is going to support you during all of life's challenges, be there for you, have your back. Uh, Even if you have different kinds of friend groups, like this friend group does this for me and this friend group is here for me for this. And we, we ping pong off of each other to take care of each other. I think it's really important to just invest in those and make sure that you are making lifelong bonds. All right, that's the end of our episode. Can't wait to see you You've been listening to the Cold Coffee Club, brought to you by Houston Moms. We wish you a fabulous week with your families and look forward to sharing many more cups of cold coffee with you.